Let's take a look at solving linear equations and a general strategy that we are going to use every time we have to solve a linear equation. So let's say I want to solve this equation right here. It's 7 times the quantity n minus 3 minus 8 equals negative 15. So let's take a look at our first step. First, we want to simplify each side of the equation as much as possible. So in this case, you want to look at the left side of the equal sign as its own expression and then the right side of the equal sign as its own expression. And you just want to simplify those expressions. So you need to distribute if you see parentheses and then you'll also need to combine like terms on the left side or on the right side if necessary. So when I look at this equation, on the right side, all I see is negative 15. That's simplified. I don't have to touch the right side. But when I look at the left side, I see some parentheses there. So I know that I'm going to have to distribute my 7. And then that minus 8, that's a constant. I'm probably going to be able to combine that with another constant after I distribute. So let's start simplifying the left side of the equation. So here I am working under step 1. And the first thing I see I have to do is distribute 7. So that gives me 7n minus 21 minus 8 is equal to negative 15. I'm not done simplifying yet though. That left side is still not simplified because I have two like terms, the constants, negative 21 and negative 8. I can combine those. So that gives me 7n minus 29 equals negative 15. Now the left side of my equal sign is simplified and the right side is, so I can go ahead and check that I'm done with step one. Step two tells me to collect all variable terms on one side of the equation. Well, as I look at my equation, I only see the n variable once. The variable only occurs once and it happens to be on the left side. So I don't really have to do anything for step two because all the n's are on the same side. There's nothing to do here, so I'm done with step two. Let's move on to step three. Now I want to collect constant terms on the other side. So I've designated that the left side is going to be where my variable lives because the n is already there. So now what I want to do is I want to make the right side where all the constants go. So in order to do this, I have to add 29 to both sides. So now I'm working on step 3. So I have 7n minus 29, but now I'm going to add 29. But I have to be fair and do it to the right side as well. So you can see I added 29 to both sides to keep the equation balanced. So what that does on the left side, that makes negative 29 plus 29 become 0. So then 7n is all by itself. So now I have 7n equals 14, and the 14 comes from the negative 15 plus the 29. So now I'm done with step 3. Step 4 is my almost to last step. Um, there actually is a step 5, but let's go on with step 4. I need to make the coefficient of the variable term equal to 1. So right now the coefficient of my variable term is 7. Um, and I want that to be a 1. So the only way to turn 7 into 1 is to divide by 7. So I'm going to do step 4 now, and I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 7. So that leaves me with n, which is the same as 1n, equals 2. So now we are ready for our fifth and final step. We want to check our solution and make sure that it works. We want to make sure we didn't make any mistakes during our solving process. So if you recall, we found that the solution was n equals 2. Here's our original problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute the value 2 everywhere I see the n in my original equation, and I'm going to make sure that the left side equals the right side. So if you remember from an earlier lesson, we're going to use our skeleton method. So I'm going to recopy my equation, and instead of the n, I put a... Um, an empty set of parentheses. And inside of that empty set of parentheses, I'm going to replace with the value 2. So now I'm going to follow order of operations to simplify that left side of the equation. So that tells me to work inside parentheses first. And inside the parentheses, I see a 2 minus 3. So that means I have 7 times negative 1 minus 8 is supposed to equal negative 15. So I get negative 7 minus 8 equals negative 15. And when I subtract negative 7 minus 8, I do, in fact, get 
negative 15, which balances out with the right side. So I know that my solution is correct, and I can be confident that n equals 2 is the solution. Let's take a look at another example, but this time we will notice that we have variables on both sides of the equal sign. So if we look on the left where we see 15 plus 6x, that's a variable on the left side. And then on the right side of the equal sign, we have 51 minus 2 times the quantity x plus 3 plus 10x. So now I see the x occur twice on the right side. So our strategy is still going to be the same. We're still going to follow the same steps. But you'll notice that in the first example, we were able to skip a step. Um, but in this case, we're not going to be able to skip that step because of the fact that there's variables on the both sides. So let's start. Um, we first want to simplify each side. So that's where we pretend the left side is its own expression and the right side is its own expression. So let's start working under step one. Now I've highlighted the left side to show that that's already simplified. 15 plus 6x, if that is its own expression, there is no simplification to do. 15 is a constant, 6x is a variable term, we can't combine them, so the left side is good. We do need to simplify the right side though. So the first thing I notice is that this negative 2 needs to be distributed into the parentheses that contains x plus 3. So I'm going to start recopying my equation. 15 plus 6x on the left does not change. Then I have my equal sign. Now I have 51, but I'm going to minus 2x because I distribute the negative 2 and then minus 6. And then I end with a plus 10x. My right side is still not simplified. My left side is good, but my right side is still not simplified. I have like terms. So on the right side, the negative 2x will combine with the positive 10x, and the constant 51 will combine with the other constant negative 6. So my left side is still 15 plus 6x equals, let's do the variables first now, negative 2x plus 10x gives me 8x, and then the constant 51 minus 6 gives me a plus 45. Now I can be confident that I'm done with step 1 because now I've got the right side simplified to 8x plus 45. There's no more simplifying to do. Let's go on to step 2. Now I have to do this step. I have to collect all variable terms on one side. So on the left side I see there's a 6x. On the right side I see there's an 8x. I have two choices at this point. I could subtract 8x from both sides. If I do that, then my coefficient becomes negative 2. That's okay, but if you prefer to keep your coefficients positive whenever possible, then you would want to subtract 6x from both sides. So I'm going to go that route. So for step 2, I'm going to minus 6x from both sides of the equation. And notice how I wrote it underneath the like term. So I wrote minus 6x underneath another x term. Um, in the first example, I did it horizontally, where I wrote out the terms horizontally. You can also do it in this vertical fashion. So after I subtract 6x from the left side, all I have is 15. Just 15, no more x term. On the right side, when I do 8x minus 6x, I get positive 2x, but I still have that plus 45. But now I'm done with step 2, because now my x only occurs on the right side of the equation. Step three, I'm going to do the same thing, but with the constants. So now that the x lives on the right side of the equation, my constants need to live on the left side. So in order to complete step three, I want a minus 45 from both sides, which will make the constants only appear on the left side of the equation. So 15 minus 45 gives me negative 30, and that equals 2x. So now I'm done with step three. And step four, I need that 2x. I need it just to be a 1x. So to turn the 2x into the 1x, I will divide both sides by 2. So for step 4, I'm going to divide both sides by 2, which leaves me with negative 15 equals x. So we are almost done. We can taste it. Um, but on the next slide, we're going to check our answer. Okay, so for our last step, we're going to check and make sure that the solution we found, x equals negative 15, is in fact the correct solution. So this is where we make our skeleton of our equation. Everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with a negative parenthesis, and then I'm going to fill those in with a negative 15. So I'm checking to see if x equals negative 15 is the correct solution. So let's start with my, or my skeleton here. So everywhere I see x, I'm going to replace that with a, an empty parenthesis, or an empty set of parentheses. 
And now I'm going to go through and fill in every empty set of parentheses with the value negative 15. And then I'm going to work order of operations on the left side of the equal sign and on the right side of the equal sign to make sure that I get a balanced equation at the end. So let's look at the steps I can perform. I'm going to do some multiplication on the left, the 6 times the negative 15. I'm going to work inside the parentheses on the right side, and I'm also going to do some multiplying on the right side with the 10 times the negative 15. So on the left side, I get 15 minus 90 equals 51 minus 2, and then inside parentheses there, I have a negative 12. And then when I multiply the 10 times the negative 15, I get minus 150. Let's keep doing our order of operations. I can do subtraction on the left side, and on the right side, I'm going to take care of the multiplication. So I get negative 75 on the left equals 51 plus 24, because I'm doing a negative 2 times negative 12 and then minus 150. So my left side is negative 75, so now I just have to see and hope that my right side also becomes negative 75. So on the right, I'm going to add. So on the left, I have negative 75, and then I have equals positive 75 minus 150, and yes, when I subtract on the right side, look at that. I get a balanced out equation. So what that tells me is that my value of negative 15 for my solution is correct. So I know that the correct solution is x equals negative 15.